I've read some reviews on this and I don't know if it's that bad. <laughs> Hey guys, it's G from the Effort here to review the Netflix original movie Irreplaceable You. Now, Irreplaceable You is about a couple. They've known each other since they were eight years old. They've been together for that long. And Abby and Sam are our two main characters. Abby being a type A personality, Sam being a type Z or Z, depending on where you're from, as it states in the movie by their one friend. Now, they are engaged and they're expecting. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is what they thought was a pregnancy surprise, ends up being cancer. And she has masses in her stomach and everything like that. So now their whole world is upside down. And Abby's first thought is, what am I going to do with Sam? Because Sam needs me. Sam being that type Z or Z personality, not very good with the ladies, very quiet, very timid, very reserved. So she's worried about him because they've been together for so long. While Sam's kind of worrying about Abby, he's not really worried about if he's going to find somebody else. So Abby embarks on this little journey of finding a suitable mate for him through a series of interviews and all that sorts of stuff like that. So I'm going to start with the bad stuff. Normally I start with good. I'm going to go with bad because there is a lot more bad to good, but I do want to end this with a high note. This is a very by the numbers story. This is a very kind of Nicholas Sparks esque and not as good as the notebook, which yes, the notebook was actually a good movie. And so I have an issue because there was no substance to any of this. And although I complain sometimes that some shows and movies are longer, this one is almost too short. And too short for you to even care outside of the fact that she does have cancer and it is a big deal because cancer is a fucking bitch. And so whatever happens in this, aside from a few points... You kind of don't care as much as you expect to. It's not really a tearjerker either. There is one scene in here that was even close to it, and it's very early on in the movie. That's when the realness of cancer actually sets in. And, and in this group session that's spearheaded by Steve Coogan for some reason, and has Kate McKinnon in this for some reason, really, there's no reason for them to be in here. And I don't have an issue with Kate McKinnon. I actually think she's quite funny. But in this... She's kind of doing the weird Kate McKinnon. In this, it just really felt out of place. And both Steve Coogan and Kate McKinnon could have been played by some random people. And Kate McKinnon's character could have been toned down and it would have been just fine. Now, some reviews are saying that the idea of her finding a mate for Sam is far-fetched and stupid and all that stuff. I don't see it that way because it is a way for her to displace the realness of cancer and what she has to go through being a type A personality and just trying to distract herself with this, even though she should be focusing on herself, of course. So I wouldn't say it's it's that bad. On paper, it sounds a lot better than how it's presented. And this, again, could very well be because it is a shorter movie that is just a series of moments that have no substance to them. And that was probably my biggest issue. Because it moved so fast, everything just moved real fast, and then things just eventually happened in the next scene that weren't really tied together. So you're kind of like, okay, now we're here now. Boom, 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 boom. We don't have enough time to get as invested in our characters as we want, or at least I didn't. And we don't have enough time to care about the subject as a fact that, hey, it's cancer, you should be caring. And that's what it felt like it did. Kind of manipulating that aspect of the story with our characters to force us to feel something more than we actually ended up doing. We're just supposed to feel and accept this because it is cancer, but there are a lot of movies that do dive into this subject matter that make you feel a lot more. Christopher Walken in this is the best. He is the reason you'll want to watch this. He brings in logic. He brings in sensibility. He puts Abby in her place. Now, not just Christopher Walken, but also the character Dominic, who is the nurse at the hospital where she's going through her chemo and sitting there and he's talking to her and chilling out with her and being friends with her. Abby's relationship with both of them, I really liked. I liked Abby's relationship with Sam, but again, it was very quick and very slow and we're just supposed to be like, oh, they've been together for since they were eight years old, so we're just going to automatically love them and they're perfect. And don't get me wrong, they do have some good on-screen chemistry, but not as much as she has with Dominic and as specifically with Christopher Walken. That is a really positive note on this movie is those two because it does bring in the realness and our misconceptions of what a person is dealing with of with cancer. Dominic being in this field has seen this happen a lot. So her ideas are just not going to fly with him because he's seen this a thousand times. And Christopher Walken going through this 
he's older, he's lived a life, he's made his mistakes, and he's letting her know the realness of it. And of course, her being the personality type that, that the movie makes her, she obviously doesn't go on board with everything that he says. And then lastly, I will say there are some moments where, you know, they, they are supposed to be the tearjerkers. They don't get that far, but they are pretty decent. They are moments where, you know, it does make you feel something. Again, specifically that one point where she is canceling all of her plans and one by one phoning venue, the, the company that's going to make their cake, all that stuff and canceling it for this reason and trying to hide it from them. But mostly it's her really clicking into what it is. And then there's also some moments where, you know, there is some happiness there and obviously the effects of chemo and the effects of the cancer hit her and kind of stop it there. And those felt real. So all in all, this is a pretty basic by the numbers movie that you don't really have to rush out to see. If you don't end up seeing it, it's not a big deal. It kind of plays off like a Nicholas Sparks movie that's a little bit manipulating at times. But mostly the biggest issue I had with it was that it just didn't feel like it had that much substance to it. We're just expected to have the feelings that the movie wants us to have because of the subject matter and because of the fact they've been together since they were eight years old and all that. You do feel for Sam, you do feel for Abby, as any human would, but for it being a movie, you are expecting just that little bit more, a little bit more build up to things, more earned moments. Anyways, guys, that's my quick review of Irreplaceable You. If you, if you do end up checking it out, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me all that stuff. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to get in on our live show every Friday on our Instagram page on entertain facts. Help us get to 55,000 because it would be great. And until next time, I'll catch you later. I'm G and I'm out.